so much for joining us for Community Focus because it's our honor to bring you today one of America's most celebrated artists, Ted Ellis, a resident of Houston, formerly of New Orleans, and he's been featured in such publications as Newsweek, Southern Living Magazine. An exhibition of Ted's work is opening this month in the Rosa Parks Museum of Troy University and will continue through February. Ted, thank you for joining us in person. What a pleasure. Wow, thank you. That was a wonderful introduction. Ted, how is it that you turned from engineer to artist, or was it vice versa? Actually, I was always an artist. The parental influence was to go to school, get my degree, become this wonderful, celebrated attorney, doctor, or professor. Um, I sort of did that. I worked as an environmental engineer for eight years, and then I turned to doing my passion full-time afterwards. You are no stranger to our NPR listeners. That's correct. What uh, happened at the inauguration? Well, I wound up doing this piece, um, Obama the 44th President, and a, a very large piece, a very colorful piece, and it sort of just found a way of its own in, in the Houston community. Um, I, I wound up getting interviewed and showcased on TV, and NPR Radio found out about it, and they gave me a wonderful interview. And the listeners called in and said, you know, what time are you going to be showcasing in D.C.? We happened to do the unveiling at the French Embassy the day right before the inauguration. Could you believe all of that happening to you? Oh, you at know, one of America's most pivotal moments in history. You, you, you think about it in, in the chronicles of time, and you, you say, you know, wow, you know, look what happens when you, when you, you take your passion and you, you marry it to purpose, and you see the, the results of it. And I was just telling a gentleman earlier here that, you know, you know, it's fulfilling. It has not been fulfilled yet, but you find out that, you know, when you're passionate about something, uh, you work with your passion for purpose, for greater good, things happen. You don't need to have the best made business plan or marketing plan. So for that time, you know, seeing the first African-American president um, of the United States and being part of that historical moment, you know, it's priceless. There's been an explosion of interest in your art. Do you think it had to do with the inauguration or the effect that Katrina had on you? I think it's a, it's a culmination of all of it. But if, if I had to start from the very beginning, um, I got to think about my mom and my dad. Um, you know, my mom was always a, a, a person of, of, of service, of helping others with, with little means. My dad was a musician, and he, um, he totally embraced his passion up until his death. And, um, you know, they always was there to, 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 to lead me and guide me in doing stuff other than just for myself. And so, you know, I've been very pur purposeful along my artistic career to find a way to help humanity, whether it's a fundraising event, you know, whether it's, um, you know, teaching somebody how to draw, and also speaking through my art. You know, there's something very powerful about art. It is a universal language. It says nothing, but it says everything. It speaks to you politically. It speaks to you socially. It speaks to you culturally, educationally. And if you're looking for the economics of it, it does that as, as well. So whatever, whatever it is that you want to derive from art, it's there. It's, it's, for me, it's, it's, it's a utensil. It's a, it's a vehicle to improve humanity. And, um, you know, I advocate from, from my pulpit of art, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm very um, deliberate in, in what I do. I'm very passionate about my, my culture as an African American and my history. But that's part of American history and culture as well. You know, um, years ago in the late 90s, I saw a lot um, on TV about the Bloods and the Crips. And I said, wow, I said, I'm just so sick and tired of seeing that kind of imagery projected of African American males. I said, I grew up poor. I don't use that as an excuse. I have a quality education. I dared to dream to become a young captain of enterprise at some point. Um, and so, you know, here I am, middle, middle America, middle management, and, and, and making a difference. You know, married, functional, taking care of my family. Tell that story. That's what these young African American males need to see. And so, you know, I was sending in my um, letters and, you know, to the media, but I didn't, I didn't see that being reflected. So I said, you know, what is it that I love doing? I love, I've always loved to paint. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to focus on painting positive images of African Americans across the board. You know, this, this vital um, historical resource of our contributions, our undying spirit 
under duress to find a way to, to make it a, a better way, not only for themselves, but for the rest of the world, the rest of humanity. And, um, you know, that's, that's my, my daily walk. So my art is my magic carpet. Um, there's tremendous amount of, of purpose behind the palette and the canvas. Um, I have something to say, and I want to be able to share that with the, with the world. You know, the world is watching us. You know, they still look at, at, at America as leaders on doing the right thing. And so, you know, I, I look at our times now. You know, I think about the good side of capitalism, the bad side of capitalism, the good side of humanity, the bad side of humanity. And I say, you know, what side I want to step on, you know, to fill in the gap. And so, you know, art is a gift from God that's a, a, an instrument of healing. And so, you know, I, I want to stay mindful of that. I want to stay grounded in that. And, uh, you know, coming here to showcase at the Rosa Parks Museum is a, is a phenomenal opportunity for myself and others. So, you know, I, you know, I want to stay prayerful. I want to be grounded. I want to have the right kind of humility that I'm able to advocate the right kind of way and do the right kind of things because there are going to be other young Ted Ellis's coming behind, you know, from every persuasion and every walk of life. So it's critically important that we, we all participate and do this the right kind of way. Does it strike you that you are inspiring young Ted Ellis's? Children who will be seeing your art may want to follow in your footsteps. And let's talk just a moment about your style, which has been described as a marriage between realism and impressionism. It's very colorful, which of course would appeal to young people. G guess without a doubt, um, you, know, I, I, you know, I look at myself right now in the present and, um, and I, can, I can look back some years later and I say, wow, you know, I'm 47 years of age. You know, I remember the first time when one of the students said, you know, Mr. Ellis, I said, wow, am I that old? So, you know, very impressionable. Um, um, you know, with kids, you know, that's our number one investment. You know, not our homes, not our cars, you know, not our portfolio, but our, but our children. I, w I was real, real lucky um, this, this the beginning part of the year to get some um, stimulus money to do my art outreach program. And, and I partnered with the Houston Independent School System and decided to work with disadvantaged kids. But, but that's what folks had called them, disadvantaged kids. But I said, okay, let's make it happen. So we took on three projects. Let, let's help those, those students and families in Haiti through art. You know, I said, what does it mean um, to have the first African-American president in the United States? And what is it that the president can do for you right now? And the last project, and we all, they had to communicate this through art. I said, you know, science, technology, innovation. What's the precursor to that? Innovation. I said, let's help save NASA through art. And so, you know, with that, you know, these kids responded and, um, and made an impact. And, um, and, and, and for me, it was refreshing to see that they, they, they found a way to, to participate, not only for themselves, but for others. And, and so, you know, being a role model um, and leveraging my passion in art, you know, it's no, no better um, gift to um, be fulfilled that kind of way. Let me ask you about your community ser service mm -hmm. involvement. Has it always been there since you picked up the paintbrush, or did it just grow? Because that's one of the hallmarks of your work, giving back to communities. Um, it always has. I mean, since I've, since I've started, I've, I've always partnered with organizations in the fundraising capacity. Um, um, it, it, it continues to be that kind of way. It's, um, it, it's part of, of our responsibility. Um, that we have to, and so, uh, so you know, I have no problems with that. I enjoy it, and um, you know, it gets my art out in front of everybody. So yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a wonderful opportunity. Has your style evolved over the years? Yeah, you know, I kind of you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the impressionist, you know, Monet, Van Gogh, um, that whole movement. Um, but you know, I my my I don't have the the formal training. That, that, that Monet and, and Van Gogh, I mean, they were very, very much the students of art and anatomy. And so that's where I fall short at. So, you know, I kind of like just soulfully paint. Uh, you know, it's, it's sort of primitive in a sense, but it's, it has a little, a little air of sophistication, and it becomes kind of like my own style, my own interpretation, and, um, and it works. And kids grab it, like you said earlier, you know, kids seem to like what I do because they can, they say, well, you know, it's, I can do that. And I say, yes, you can. It's not far out. Right. It's not. Yeah. Art. Yeah. It's it's not so 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 much as so technically refined that they feel they feel unencumbered that they can't they can't do it. Yeah. Let's talk about some specifics because the ex exhibition will be able to be viewed at the Troy University Rosa Parks Museum, mm -hmm. January 13th through February 24th, and you're also doing a couple of workshops. That's correct. 
we, we're, we're, we're going to be totally integrated in the community. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make art speak. We're gonna we're gonna show show that it works not only in a museum but even outside the museum. So we're gonna actually be painting on location. I will be. We're gonna actually have the students to come in and engage and participate and paint. And and and, and what I'm gonna pose it'll probably be several questions. It may change. You know you know what does it mean? You know about the civil rights movement. And I need for you to communicate that in art. And so each one of these students, uh, uh, um, um, young adults will have a chance to create wonderful artwork and it will be our our responsibility during the time of the, t the time of the, the total exhibit to have their artwork to showcase the same time with mine so that we can celebritize the next generation of other wonderful young artists. We're talking about January 13th and 14th and one of those days you'll be painting Rosa Parks home. That's correct. That's right. So, um, you know, that's I They'll see how Ted paints, uh, his painting technique, his passion, right there under a whole bunch of duress with cameras and kids in the community. And I just think it'll be fun. It'll give people time to, you know, to engage and, and to see me personally. What sort of art materials do you use? You know, definitely the canvases, brush. I, um, I, I want to say I'm an environmentally friendly artist, so you know, I use water-soluble materials. Um, acrylic paints, is, 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 I'm a big fan of it. And, um, you know, th that'll be it. It'll be my easel, my chair, and my material. Your subject matter is such a huge range. I mean, everything from the Buffalo Soldiers, and why did you get involved in the Buffalo Soldiers story, <laughs> to the Tuskegee Airmen, to the Rosa Parks story, to civil rights, to NASA? Okay. That's a, yeah, there's not enough time in a day for me to be able to, 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 to tell that story of, of the commitment and the history um, the accomplishments, the, the triumphs and the failures that we encounter. But, you know, we pick ourselves up and we, we make it happen. There's always been in the African American community the issue of isolationism and separation and stuff. But we, we break through those barriers. You know, you talk about the Tuskegee Airmen, you talk about the Buffalo Soldier, you talk about uh, the um, Negro professional baseball players, you know, th you know, excluded but now included. And so, you know, for the rest of the world, you know, it's not about exclusion, it's about inclusion. And um, here's an example, and just to chronicle that, you know, to tell that story. You know, um, you know what will they say 50, 100 uh, millennia from now through my, through my art? And so that's, that's what I, I, I want to leave that, that legacy there, that pictorial documentation, that it's important. And, um, you know, particularly for, for, for folks to understand the, 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 the accomplishment and the undying spirit of, of African Americans uh, under duress during slavery, during civil rights, still found a way to contribute in a wonderful way. And, um, and if we can catch that, and, 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 it's, it, and it's, it's like, you know, you know, I forgive, you know, may not forget, but forgive, you know, that, you know, we're all human. We, we, we don't live in a vacuum. We live amongst ourselves. And, and, you know, for the greater good of humanity, you know, it, it's about peace and about love and about caring. And I got to project that in my artwork. So when I did my, 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 my series on, uh, on American slavery, the reason why we're here, from, from Gory Island to the West Indies to the skill set of the slaves to the global exploitation of slavery to the emancipation of slavery to the age of Obama, the exhibition speaks of hope and promise that tomorrow will be a, bit, a better day. I mean, my short time on this earth, that's how I want to live my life, to be that kind of example, that to think and do good. That's where we need to be at and, and brush aside, you know, all the other negative stuff. You know, we, we can. We, we, have, we have the ability, the manifestation within ourselves to do good for others and not just ourselves and not to be selfish. And so, you know, um, you know that's why I love America so much. We've been that kind of example. But there's some caution. I see, I see us doing things differently. And I want to remind us that we always operated from the premise of doing goodwill for, for, for here with, with all the, the inequities and inefficiencies in this country. We, we, we work to be better, to do better. And that's all we have to be remindful each day when we wake up. And so, um, you know, art is, is not a job for me. It's, it's my livelihood. It's, it's what I live for. You know, it's what I'm passionate about. And so, you know, I just, I just want to do good while I'm here with my art.
Ted, you have a traveling exhibition that's very popular. Are you getting that feedback from the viewers of that exhibition that your message is being confirmed through oh. their response? Oh, yes. Uh, you know, recently, the New Orleans African American Museum, we've had the exhibit up, um, Something to See, uh, um, Native Sun Comes Home to Art of Ted Ellis. And it's a compilation of, of, of um, a pictorial documentation from slavery to the age of Obama. So you see my, my medical pieces in there, you see some of my religious pieces in there, some of my rural pieces. You see my free people of color in there. And um, you know, it's a port city, so and New Orleans is a popular city. So you have folks that are coming in from Paris, France, from Switzerland, and they, some of them come in there speaking different languages, and then they, they, they put it into English here so that I can understand when I've been there to visit. And uh, you know, I've seen men cry you know, at the exhibition, and uh, and for the kids that come in and say, oh, mom, you know, that's you, you know, you, that's dead, that's the attorney piece right there, and, you know, it resonates, you know, it speaks to, to you at your level of understanding, and that's what's so powerful, and so for me, to see people have the right kind of positive response from my artwork lets me know that I'm doing something right. What an uplifting message. No, thank you. Can you give us your website? Yes, it's, um, tellisfineart.com. One That's more time. tellisfineart.com. And if you'd like to find out more about the exhibition of Ted Ellis at the Troy University Rosa Parks Museum, simply consult the website that is www.troy.edu or simply call 241-8615. Ted, what a pleasure and an honor to talk with you today. Thank you for joining us. Carolyn, thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. We've been speaking with one of America's most celebrated artists, Ted Ellis of Texas. Wow. Thank you for joining oh, us today. You.